Good morning everyone. Today is the fourth day of our Bhutan trip and as you can see it has been raining from the last night. So hopefully the sky will clear up. Today we will be traveling from Thimpu to Punakha and it will take around 2 to 3 hours to reach Punakha. We have come down to have our breakfast now and as you can see the entire restaurant is empty. The reason is that we are the only boarders as I said last night that today we are the only boarders. So here is our breakfast bread. They brought it at the table today instead of setting up a buffet. And that's the view from our window. The rain drenched Thimpu. Let's quickly finish our breakfast and then head to our rooms and check out. We are now back at the room and some good news. As you can see the rain has stopped. Uh, the sun has come out and fingers crossed we will get a good weather today because we have a long way to go and I don't want the weather to play a spoil sport today. A little about our plan, we will be covering a distance of 75 kilometers with a stopover at Dochula Pass. From 7500 feet, we will ascend to 10,000 feet and then come down to 4000 feet. So obviously we are expecting to experience a lot of temperature variations along the okay. way today. Thimpu was typically pleasant in the morning and cold in the night. But we have heard that Punakha is generally warmer than Thimpu due to the altitude differences between the two places. Now a couple of tips in this regard. If you are prone to motion sickness, take your anti-vomiting pills 30 minutes before starting the journey. The serpentine roads demand extra care, keep that in mind. Keep your jackets and shawls handy. Most of the time in Dochula Pass, the temperature will be low. And for those with mobility issues, consider carrying a walking or a trekking stick. This is applicable not only for Dochula, but for the entire Buddha. Before we arrived at Dochula, Funshu told us about the story behind this place. Unfortunately, there is some problem with that audio. So let me tell you about that story. Dochula is more than just a mountain pass. The conflict between the Royal Bhutan Army and insurgents in 2003 was a significant event in Bhutan's recent history. The insurgents, mainly from Indian militant groups such as the United Liberation Front of Assam, the National Democratic Front of Bodoland, and the Kamtapur Liberation Organization, had established bases in the dense forest of southern Bhutan. From these bases, they launched attack on the Indian soil, leading to growing tension between Bhutan and India. For years, Bhutan attempted to resolve the issue diplomatically, urging the militants to leave voluntarily. The Bhutanese government, under the leadership of the fourth king, Druk Galpo Jigme Singhye Wongchuk, sought a peaceful resolution and engaged in multiple rounds of negotiations with the insurgents. However, these efforts were unsuccessful and the militants refused to vacate the Bhutanese territory. As the situation escalated and pressure from India increased, Bhutan decided to take military action. On December 15, 2003, the Royal Bhutan Army launched Operation All Clear, a coordinated offensive to flush out the insurgents from their camp. The operation involved thousands of Bhutanese troops and was carried out with the precision and determination Despite the challenging terrain and the fact that the RBA had never engaged in a full-scale military conflict before. The operation was a success. Within a few weeks, the Bhutanese forces had dismantled most of the insurgent camps and driven the militants out of Bhutanese territory. The success of this operation was a testament to the leadership of the king and the courage of the Bhutanese soldiers. This operation helped strengthen Bhutan's ties with India. The Chortens at Dochula Pass, known as the Drukwangal Chorten, were built to commemorate the Bhutanese soldiers who lost their lives during the operation, serving as a lasting tribute to their bravery and sacrifice. The 108 Drukwangal Chortens of Dochula Pass was constructed under the patronage of the eldest Queen Mother Queen Ashi Dorji Wangchuk to honor the Bhutanese soldiers. And it is only 
only fog can be seen. Oh, see, <laughs> it's a fog, fog everywhere. Uh, this place remains foggy because of the height, right? Uh -huh. It's uh, 3150 meters of Pachapa. Okay, so we are here at Dotula Pass. I don't think the camera is actually able to do enough justice to what I'm seeing with my bare eyes right now. The thick cover of fog is making everything look so surreal. Let me take you inside now. The white color structures that we are seeing around are the Dochula Chortans. The Dochula Chortans have been structured in three layers. The first level has 45 Chortans, the second level has 36 Chortans and the topmost layer has 27 Chortans. All built around the central main structure. Each of these chortans are built following a very strict and religiously ordained process. Each stupa is identical in nature, pristine white in color with red border at the top and golden colored circles in between the red band. Square wooden poles called the shokshin carved from the juniper trees are embedded inside each chortan and it is believed that these chortans provide a link between the heaven and the earth. The pass is also a gateway to several trekking routes, allowing travelers to explore the pristine forests and valleys that surround it. The rich biodiversity of the region, including a variety of rhododendron species, adds to the charm of Dojula, particularly in the spring when the landscape bursts into colors. For those who don't know, a highly disrespectful incident occurred at Dochula when an Indian biker climbed onto one of the stupas to pose for a photo. This is one of the reasons why having a guide is now mandatory, ensuring that tourists' activities are properly monitored. Dochula Pass is more than just a viewpoint. It's a place of reflection and remembrance. This site invites visitors to pause and contemplate the sacrifices made to protect the kingdom's sovereignty as well as the values of peace and compassion that are deeply embedded in the Bhutanese culture. We are now entering the picturesque Group Wangel Cafe. As expected, Dochula is pretty cold and cloudy and a lightweight jacket is enough for this weather. On a clear day, you can see the panoramic views of the Eastern Himalayan range from this cafe. Just see how charming this place looks. Washroom facilities are available at this place, so you can take a quick bio break if you want. The cafe's large windows allow visitors to enjoy the stunning views while staying warm and comfortable indoors, making it an ideal spot to relax and take in the beauty of Bhutan's landscape. This multi-cuisine restaurant offers a wide range of dishes from steaming hot beverages like lemon tea, hot chocolate, snacks like momo, chow mein, to eclairs and lamingtons. But since we were really not hungry, so we settled for some hot tea.
As I mentioned that on a clear day you can see the panoramic view of the mountains behind and this photograph depicts all the mountains that can be seen from this place. You must have already seen Funsho, our guide who is in the red go in my earlier videos but now you can see Sange also who is driving us around and in that black go. While coming out of the cafe, I saw this big crowd surrounding the long flagpole here and at that time I did not know that they were the 26 content creators from different countries who had come to Bhutan for the first bloggers conference. The activity happening here was specifically organized for them to get them acquainted with the Bhutanese culture. If we had more time in our hands, we would have stayed longer at the Dochula Pass to enjoy the hill station like weather. I'll probably stay quiet now and let you enjoy the views along the road. Our hearts beat to the city streets. We begin to feel the fire. We rise like so the chemicals that take us higher The night's young And it's just begun As she puts her hand in hand We want to chase the night Hope you enjoyed that beautiful ride and now we have begun our descent towards Punaka. So we have stopped at a vegetable market on the way and this is the second time we are stopping by a vegetable market on our way to some destination. So if you had seen my first episode where we travelled from Funshadik Thimpu, we had stopped at a similar vegetable market as well. This is great. I was just telling her, let us get one. The masala is so good. What do they put here? Mm. The veggies are so fresh here that I feel like buying almost the entire market. You can see some unique vegetables like fiddlehead ferns, asparagus, small spinach, and broccoli over here, there are apples, there are oranges and uh, there are multiple, you know, local snacks also available. So now we are heading towards Lubesa village for our lunch and the practice is that your guide will uh, intimate the restaurant or the hotel in advance what you want to eat and accordingly they will prepare and keep it ready. This is where we are going to have lunch, the Rin Chilling Cafeteria. The USP of this place is that it has a picturesque view from its restaurant overseeing the surrounding mountains. Also, this place is situated on the way to the legendary Chibilakhang or the Fertility Temple in Punaka. This village is known as Sobsaka village in Lobesa, otherwise also famously referred to as the village of flying phalluses. Right now as you can see we have the entire place to ourselves and we are the only guests here who are going to have a lunch. Uh, the lunch is going to be a buffet lunch, that is what we are told. The look of the place is quite impressive I must say. But you know, as we have reached Punaka, we can feel the temperature going up. Like it's a very huge difference from what we had 
you know felt at Thimpu versus what we had felt at Dojula and now what we are feeling at Punagha. This feels really tropical, somewhat like an Indian summer kind of a weather. The washroom here is very modern and clean, which is also one of the good things about this restaurant. If you observe closely, you can see tourists walking through the paddy fields towards the Chimilakhang temple. They serve the food at the table itself, so we don't need to go and get it from the buffet. And they are just you know, putting it in batches. So it's like a combination of Bhutanese and Indian and you know Chinese kind of food. Uh, not really an authentic Bhutanese experience, but let's see how the taste is. Oh, momos. Thank you. Food was pretty average. None of the dishes deserves any special mention. It was okay, uh, but considering the pocket burn, not worth. They had a few things on sale at the counter, and this painting of Dochula Pass on a leather was something that really caught my eye. It's very beautiful. For centuries, Bhutan has celebrated the phallus. They are painted on the homes or carved in wood, installed above the doorways to ward off evil and gossips and bring good luck. It may be a bit uncomfortable at first, but you kind of get used to it after seeing it everywhere. Since every country has its own unique culture and beliefs, so as a tourist, you should be well read about their customs and culture before you arrive in that country so that you don't disrespect that particular culture or belief. On the way to Punakha, Funshu told us many stories about the divine madman, how he got his name, how he got his followers and also about the different palace paintings and their significance. We realized we have already reached Punakha when Sange stopped the car and we saw this majestic zong right in front of us. I was wearing a comfortable pair of Skechers flip-flop which you saw in Dochula Pass but you know, I got a few anxious moments because Funcho said that open shoes might not be allowed inside the zone. So, you know, I was a little scared. But after a while, he assured me that this would be okay and we would be allowed inside. So this is Mochu. Yeah, this is Mochu. And then the bridge over there is known as a uh, Bhutanese traditional Tenth River Bridge. Hmm. So it was constructed here in 2008. Okay. Yeah. And then the capacity is up to 500 people here. There is more than 500 means we have to swim down here. <laughs> It's very beautiful. This bridge itself is very beautiful. Yeah, so and then the, it was funded by the, uh, the funded by the S German like there's a hmm. company from Germany. Okay. So they supported. The Zong is located at the confluence of the Fochu or the Father River and Mochu, the Mother River. Well, so you can see a decadent tree here. This is a beautiful flowering tree. Which flower is this? Jacaranda. Jacaranda. Yes. Uh, this is purple flowers. Purple flower. 
The jacaranda trees grow around the zone, blooming with more flowers in the spring. The seasonal spectacle adds to the zone's charm, making it a favorite subject for the photographers. The Punakha Zong was constructed in 1637 by Zabdrung, the unifier of Bhutan. The site was chosen for its strategic location where the two rivers meet, symbolizing unity. The Zong played a crucial role in Bhutan's defense during the various Tibetan invasions in the 17th century, serving as a fortress to protect the kingdom from external threats. In the past, it was used for the military purpose. Hmm. Now, The, uh, the, we are using this for the administration, administration. As, and then the monastic purpose. Okay. okay. The purpose is changed over the time. Mm. And then uh, the important event took place here was like the, the, the first king was coronated here. Oh, okay. In, in December 17, 1907. Mira. So uh, the Mira. first king was coronated here and then even the uh royal wedding of uh, president king hmm. was done here uh -huh. and then even today this served as a, a winter capital for the central monastic body okay mm. so winter six months they stay here mm. and then summer six months they stay in temple yeah. mm. the Bhutan has many adorable stray cats often found wandering around the temples, songs and villages. And I really could not stop myself from petting them whenever I got a chance. As you can see, the steps taking you inside the zong is very steep, and this was very much intentional to make the fortress more defensible against enemies, floods as well as evil spirits. So we have a four guardian king who protect us from the four direction. So over here you can see the guardian king of the uh, north direction. Okay. And then behind that prayer wheel is a guardian king of the west direction. And okay. over here this is a uh, guardian king of the east direction. And then behind this prayer wheel so there is a guardian king of the south direction. So therefore east, west or south. We have a full cardinal traditional king. Things of the six characteristic of longevity here. The old man here, the bedroom of old man depicts the or represent the uh, Amitayus. Amitayus means the Buddha of longevity or the god of longevity. And then you can see two birds here. Mm. These two birds uh, represent the birds of longevity. Two animals here. Animal of longevity, tree there, tree of longevity, and you can see the stem here, hmm. the, the, the stem or the river of longevity, and then the leaf here is hmm. leaf of longevity. In total, there are six one, two, three, four, five, six. The bending of four friends or the four harmonious friends. You can see here the four animals, the birds on the top, rabbit, monkey, and elephant here. The birds on the top. Represent the Buddha. Okay. Rabbit in the second sequence represent Buddha's uh, uh, disciple, uh, Shariputra. Hmm. Monkey represent Buddha's another disciple, Mogulayana. These are the two chief disciples of Buddha, right? And an elephant on the ground represents Buddha's uh, attendant, Ananda. So, uh, as per the story, it says that long time ago, so the four of them. So has like uh, born as an animal, came as an animal form in order to pass the message of, uh, uh, of spreading love, compassion, like this to the community. This is the Dongka. Yeah. We're here in the first courtyard of the fortress. This fortress consists of three courtyards, and we are at the largest courtyard of the fortress right now. This courtyard. Uh, consists of the offices here that, that this is used as the administration center hmm. and the, all the rooms here are the administration, the administration. yes and we have a different uh, office for the different departments Punaka served as the capital and the seat of the government until the mid 1950s when the capital was shifted to Thimpu 
Today it serves as the winter residence of the chief abbot and the central monastic body due to its warmer climate. There is a sacred Bodhi tree in the middle of the courtyard which is deeply revered in Buddhism as the tree under which Siddhartha attained enlightenment and became the Buddha. In this courtyard, so the festival uh, happens here. Every district will have their uh, uh, own festival. They, uh, on a different uh, date, they will have a festival, annual festival, known as a Chichu. And then we have a Chichu where the Marx dances and then the Buddhist classical dances happen, and then so people watch that. And then there's a belief that if you watch the Marx dances, so the our sin and then the impurities will get rid of our body oh, okay. and we become pure. Every district have the same festival? Same time? Same festival, no, no, not, mm. not in the same date, in, but in, the same, uh, in the different dates. Oh, different dates. Uh, here, mostly happens in the February month. Oh. Yeah. And you can see the big tower in the middle, that is known as the central tower. Mm. It will be there in every town. And this central tower divides Song into two parts, as an administration center and as a monastic center. Mm -hmm. So as we close and go beyond this big tower, then, then uh, we, we will come to the uh, monastic center. Yes. The, of the, the second courtyard is reserved for monastic quarters, including the monks' main temple and living quarters. Divided by the Utse or the central tower, the second courtyard is split into two important halls, one of which is where the first king was decorated with the Order of the Knight Commander in 1905. The second courtyard, like the rest of the Punakha Zong, is a showcase of traditional Bhutanese architecture. The structures around the courtyard feature integrately carved woodwork, colorful murals, and distinctive red and gold roofs that are characteristic of Bhutanese songs. Okay, so we're now uh, going towards the third courtyard, the last and the most beautiful courtyard. Okay, so we <coughs> we're here at the last courtyard now. This is the most beautiful courtyard surrounded by the uh, temples at the four side. Those temples are rich in colors, so like so colorful. So that's the main temple we're going to visit mm. and then so yeah. I'll talk about this one and then the other the, the uh, Which one is main temple? Main temple. The street Front one. one. Street one is main temple where we can go inside. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's like Machin. Machin. It's a sacred temple. Mm. Yeah. So okay. So this is Machin. This this side is Machin. No, no. This side is Dukang. 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 Okay. And this is Machin. The front. Or whatever uh, is in front. Front is the Machin. Machin Dukang. And then very like sacred temple where there is huh. body remains of Shabrum. Uh, and then so. It's been treated as if like he's uh, still living. Living and, uh, there. Okay. The three meals in a day are being, are being offered, offered to him. Okay, okay. So he, since he's very important to Bhutan because like he unified the country in the 17th century, hmm. and this is Dukang. Dukang is another very important temple where the important rituals took place here. Uh, hmm. Took place here, and then this one is known as a Choten Lakang. Choten means the Stupa temple hmm. used by the monk again. So. Yeah. That's it, we'll go inside the main side mm -hmm. here and then we'll make a wish, we'll make a prayer. Inside the main temple, there are three massive and majestic 18th century gold statues of Guru Rinpoche, Shakyamuni Buddha, and the unifier of Bhutan, Zabdru. As usual, photography is not allowed inside the temple. 
We sat inside the temple for some time before heading out. We met one more house cat inside, and that too a very talkative one. Despite being damaged by fires, floods and earthquakes over the centuries, Punakha Zong has been lovingly restored each time, ensuring that it remains a symbol of Bhutan's resilience and devotion. The Zong, often called as the Palace of Great Happiness, is a breathtaking example of Bhutanese architecture, spirituality and natural beauty coming together in perfect harmony. Everything that I had heard about Punakha Zong seems to be totally true because this is indeed the most majestic Zong that I had seen till date. Our next destination was Punakha Suspension Bridge which is also the longest suspension bridge in Bhutan. From the car park, you need to walk half a kilometer to reach this suspension bridge. It's advisable to carry an umbrella with you because the sun is usually very strong. And once you're on the bridge, the wind is also super strong. Oh, Bapre. This suspension bridge is truly a marvel of engineering. Built over the Fochu River, it's not just a means of crossing the river, it's an adventure, it's a photo op and a cultural experience all rolled into one. The bridge is swaying quite a bit, especially when people are crossing us and we have to wait for a bit just to make things stabilize. Uh, it may feel a little scary, but it is not at all scary. It's pretty safe to cross the bridge. On the other side, you will find a few eateries, but they charge a bomb for everything. Uh, so after a 15 minute walk, you will definitely need some water and it's always advisable that you carry a small bottle of water with you if you really don't want to, you know, spend a lot of money in buying something from the restaurants. There are a lot of cactus plants around the car park. Look at this one. Our sightseeing is done for the day and now we are relaxing by the Mochu River. Look how pretty this is. Absolute picturesque. Though it is pretty hot under the sun, the water is extremely cold and it feels so relaxing to dip your feet in this cold water after all that walking across the suspension bridge. If you are interested, you can also do whitewater rafting in this river and they charge by the boat. What Funshu told us is that for 6 people, they will charge around 10k INR. That's the reason we skipped it because we were only 2 people and we had to get a group to get a complete boat or pay the whole amount. We are really sad to leave the riverside but uh, the day is coming to an end and now we have to check into our hotel and also let Funsho and Sange go and find some place to stay for the night. So now we are on our way to our one of the most awaited staying options in Bhutan. When I was selecting the hotels, Tashi from Amedeva Tours had suggested this property and I had immediately, you know, fallen in love with this place just by looking at the pictures. Uh, it's a farm resort, but it is absolutely a unique place. I'll tell you how. This is the approach road to the resort and you will keep on gaining a lot of height and keep on going in rounds. So basically after a point we were thinking like you know are we lost are we in the uh, I mean not going in the right direction but thankfully a few schoolboys guided us and we reached our destination You know whenever I think of all those places where I love the stay experience 
it was not just the room or the food or the view but you know what made the difference was the act of making guests feel welcome and cared for so this particular place and without any more further surprises let me tell you the name of the place so this property is named as dumra farm resort and this property the moment we stepped into this property we were greeted with warm smiles there are a bunch of lady uh, attendants who would come to you know welcome you pick your bags very cordially invite you to their property and this is you know the entire path you can see how beautiful it is at the first look itself i am in love i am in complete love okay this is a complete like stepping into an orchard in a garden and as a bonus you get this stunning gallery view of kunakha zong right from their seating area i mean i'm at a loss of words is this really a real place i'm not even kidding when i say that i'm really patting my own back for choosing this property thanks thanks let's do it all the meals in this property follow the farm to table concept and are made fresh from their garden and when you arrive you will be given a choice of welcome drinks we chose the lemon honey tea and it was the best lemon honey tea i have ever tasted the sun was coming down and the golden hour sun rays made everything look more beautiful we took a walk around their garden and everywhere we could see some unique trees flowering plants vegetables fruits like this one so this is a parsimon tree this is the first time i was seeing the parsimon fruit in its own tree words are really not enough to describe the beauty of this place now let's get inside our beautiful room here we are it's a big and spacious room with two single beds and there's a fan there's no ac but all amenities are there and the best part you, the view of the punakha zong from the room the bathroom is also spick and span matches any five star we were so mesmerized by the beautiful greenery and abundance of nature all around that we could hardly sit in the rooms all we wanted was just to go out and explore the property and we took a left came to this place and look at this place the valley the sky the beautiful nature i mean just look at the beauty of this place so I had seen a video about this property wherein uh, they showed the owners, uh, the lady of the house, the gentleman of the house, and I see. I think I can see her or see someone over there in the garden. Let's go and check it out. And I was right. It was Rinzi, the lady of the house. I was uh, plan to ask that I will take it from tomorrow when we are going to. to visit some places i will read it in my when, when while we are going you should not you should uh, enjoy enjoy the view <laughs> then you take it and then wow this book is so nice this book <laughs> i am loving it oh good good you can take it okay thank you so much <laughs> oh my god this is peach yeah I think that two days is too less next in time. this property. Oh, yeah. next, time. next time we will come directly to Pune. Only, only, only here. here. <laughs> okay. And what is in the new unit? That is a that is also deluxe. That uh, other that's side. That's a that's a villa. Villa. Okay. So a bigger group comes, they yeah, can stay. Yeah, oh, where people, should we go? Wow, the sky is looking absolutely. beautiful and this one is uh, this is maple japanese maple oh in this is planet. maple yeah ha huh, the leaves are like yeah. yes but it will be it will become so big how we will manage 
in that place. Now this is this much only. We trim it. From here we'll go. Yeah, yeah. You have cats. Yes. Okay, we love cats. Oh. <laughs> There are so many cats at our home also. Oh, okay. So you follow this one. Which one? Oh, oh this one. What is this? Is this for pizza or something? Yeah, we tried it for pizza, but really, pizza. <laughs> I just <laughs> boy, it was just a wild <laughs> guess. <laughs> but not working anymore. Oh, okay. Oh, this is there. My husband is there. Maybe you can do. Oh, he is also in the garden. <laughs> we'll ask him to sign. Sangya, you get the ball on it. <laughs> These are all lemon. Hello. Good evening, madam. Good evening. We were hearing so many things about you know the farm. Oh. She was just explaining us you know the entire uh, story. <laughs> And my mother wants to tell something. She came to the room. Oh, no, basically she came into the room. She started reading it and she said that you know I can't finish it in two days. What no, will I do? Uh, take away. <laughs> and uh, your other books are also available. Oh, that is the only book. <laughs> It's so Bandar. nice. You sign it. Okay, <laughs> it is really nice. She was just saying that you know tomorrow I will take this book. When I go to Phobji, I'll read it on the way. <laughs> It's so nice. You should write more like this. Oh yes. Come, mm -hmm. came little lazy. <laughs> <laughs> You should write this type of books. Thank you. Ma How many types of plants totally in your garden? We have not <laughs> counted it. it. Yeah, it's countless. It is countless. Does it happen that sometimes you will discover something suddenly which you did not plant? No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> which kind of grapes is this? Hmm. Mm. Tastes a bit different from that. Yeah, that's different. that's a Californian grape. Oops. Yeah. You yeah, know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Eat it. Bananas, avocado. We have uh, pomegranate. We have amla trees, but you won't be able to. Ah, oh, it is. Uh, yeah, the walk is up. Yeah. We have around seven acres. Seven oh, acres. Yes. Oh my god. Birds also. Yeah, in the morning you will hear them and see them when you're out. Yes, we station. are planning to wake up early and just stroll around. Okay, <coughs> I think that time. What time sunrise is there? Oh, sunrise maybe around six, but by five it's oh, uh, a little we lighter. Can, we can see by oh, five. Okay. You can see. Oh, okay. Beautifully. Okay. Okay. And we do our own seed banks, hmm. and then we again plant it. Okay. Best gift. Best gift. Thank Best you. travel gift ever. Ever. <laughs> Directly from the author. I mean, we cannot. Have yeah, we never <laughs> seen an author? In, we <laughs> never <laughs> seen an author in person. <laughs> Thank you. And, and it is so nice book. I am really saying that it is well, so well written and so language is so simple Hi. and so. You should write more. That is what she is saying. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> we spent some time in the seating area. Enjoying the view of Puna Khazong and then headed for dinner. Thank you. The food here is entirely organic, offering a true farm to table experience. Every ingredient was as fresh as it could be. Previously I had heard a lot about their rocket leaves salad and how iconic it was in taste and we were really lucky we were served the same salad that night. Uh, and to be very frank, I am not a salad person at all. But if I was served this salad and asked to live on it for days, I could do that. I could easily do that. It's that good. Crunchy, fresh rocket leaves from the garden. Uh, beautiful tangy cherry tomatoes, beetroots, and all dressed up in a beautiful, sweet, tangy, jazzy, you know, sauce vinaigrette. It came together beautifully. The mouth feel was absolutely wonderful. Uh, the second dish that we absolutely loved was the potato rosti. Beautifully crisp on the outside, soft on the inside, delicious, absolutely delicious. And apart from this, there were stir-fried vegetables which were amazing. Uh, the chicken was perfectly like a home-style chicken. There was plain rice. So it was a wholesome balanced meal that felt both gourmet 
as well as homely. I think we ended up overeating that night because whatever they served, we did not feel like leaving behind anything. For desserts, we were served a refreshing mulberry sorbet, drizzled with a luscious mulberry sauce and topped with fresh mulberries. Each spoonful was like a celebration of beautiful summer flavors. After that amazing meal, we spent some time looking at the books that they had outside their restaurant and then we decided to spend some more time looking at the beautiful view of Punakhazong. It was cold outside compared to the day temperature. This was a pleasant uh, deviation, but just a shawl was enough to keep you comfortable under the night sky. And we went to the most iconic place in this property, the main seating area which overlooks the Zong. And look how beautiful the view is. It feels as if we are right in the middle of a Disney movie. It feels so spectacular. We ended our day on a very sweet note and went back to our rooms to get some much needed rest. Tomorrow it will be Fobjika. See you then.